What's going on gamers? In today's video, I'm gonna be going over easy and simple ways to make yourself a better hitter in MLB The Show 22. Now, with these tips and this method that I am about to go over, it's gonna help you complete the mini seasons method, AKA glitch, super, super fast and efficiently. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, make sure that you drop a thumbs up every single time and I also stream four to five days a week. So you're gonna wanna have your notifications on so you can never miss when I am live. Let's get into today's breakdown. MLB The Show 22 hitting tips. Let's go. If you wanna complete every collection super, super fast, head over to my sponsor and use code FAT for 5% off your order, super fast and reliable. Now for this video purpose on hitting tips, we're gonna be in mini seasons and we're gonna be going against the whales. The two best teams in mini seasons is the whales and the cats, okay? And the reason why I wanna do this for hitting tips is because it's gonna give you a different variety of pitchers. You're gonna have the fastball, you're gonna have the sinker, and I'm not gonna pre-select where the pitches is gonna be. I'm gonna go over two crucial hitting tips in MLB The Show 22 that's gonna help elevate your game overnight. Now, as you can see with the lineup, we are going against one of the top cards in the game, 97 overall, Corbin Burns. Now, I'm gonna be showing you replays of certain things that you need to be watching out for, but the first hitting tip that we're gonna get in is a comfortable PCI setup, okay? So, the first thing we're gonna do is go to PCI, so we're gonna go to settings, gameplay, okay? So, you can have your hitting difficulty on anything. You can have your hitting view on any view that you prefer. Now, whatever your pitching view is, it's best to have your hit and view the same way because that's gonna give you double the amount of looks, okay? So if you get up to hit and you are pitching from that same view, it's gonna give you that many more chances to see pitches coming in and when you are pitching, being released from the pitcher, okay? So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna come down here to PCI Center if you are using Zone. PCI Center, what I have is none. The reason why I don't have diamonds and all the other type of PCIs is because the only thing that is important in hitting in MLB The Show 22 is being able to track the ball from the pitcher's hand. So I have none. You can use diamonds, you can use circles, anything that you want. Now PCI Enter, I have fish bowl. You can use any one that you want, but this is the best method that I found to use after playing over the past two years. Last year, I struggled for about two months with hitting. This year, I would say I am above average. Now, PCI Outer, I have Starfighter. You can use whatever you prefer. This is just the bare minimum tips to help you be able to concentrate on the ball and not the PCI. I have PCI color black. You can use any PCI color that you want and I have PCI transparency 50% because I don't want to be paying attention to where the circle is. I want to be making sure that I track the ball with the PCI aka the barrel of the bat. The PCI is acting as the barrel of the bat. So I want to move it in little tiny increments and I want to try to get it as centered on the ball as possible. PCI fade out, I have none. Now, an alternative is, now another alternative if you are struggling with PCI hitting and you are doing the mini seasons method, all you have to do is either use zone or timing. Timing, only thing you have to do is time up the pitches, meaning off speed pitches, you're gonna wait a little longer and then you're gonna swing Fastballs, you are gonna swing a little faster. All you have to do is just track when the pitches come in. Now, that is an important part of this video because the first two pitches that a pitcher release is usually pitches that you are tracking. So let's get more into the breakdown. All right, so I am up to hit right now. We're gonna let the first pitch come through, okay? So I like to click the analog in and boom, there's the first pitch. Okay, so it's a cutter. So if you push the right trigger or R2, you always look at the top two pitches. That right there is gonna give you a lot of information on if he has at the top, if he has an up pitch 
or a down pitch. What I mean by that is sinkers is going to drop down. Cutters is going to have a little movement, but they are mostly going to drop down. So his top two pitches are what I call down pitches, meaning that you're going to have to need to get your PCI underneath the ball. So you're going to want to start in the middle or the bottom of the zone. OK, so just a quick push of right trigger or R2 will give you the information on the pitcher. Now, the next thing is going to be taking a few pitches so you can see his delivery and get the timing down. All right. So two pitches inside. If we go look at this replay right here, one key thing that you're going to want to do, we're going to go in and then we're going to zoom in on the pitcher. OK, every pitcher, no matter who he is, once he come in, you want to pay attention to where his release point is at. OK, so looking at the brim of his hat, once he kicks his leg up, looking at the brim of his hat, that's when you can start tracking the ball right there behind his head. You should be watching behind his head and following where the ball is at. As it comes across right there, his release point is to the outside. So right here at this point, behind his head, watching his brim, you should be following his arm in the ball. That is going to give you very good timing setup. Okay. Now, if you look at it from the back, if you look at it from the back right here, this is going to help you be able to stay off of low balls and inside pitches. So once you get this timing down, the ball goes right there and once he gets to the back of his head you should be watching his hand come through his brim in the release point now you see i didn't swing at that because i'm tracking the ball i can see right there in that about two second that you get it's an inside pitch the same is a pitch that's going to be low in the dirt remember he has two dropping pitches okay so it's a 2-0 count right now we got a little bit of information that we have. We know that his fastest pitch is a sinker. Boom, another drop pitch. So that's a cutter and a sinker. They're going to be drop pitches. Sometimes they're going to look like they're going to hit the bottom of the zone. The only time you really want to go after those pitches low in the zone is when you are in protect mode, meaning that you have two strikes. So with a 3-1 count, you are looking for your pitcher to make a mistake. There he goes with a cutter high. And remember this. If you are chasing pitches out of the zone, people are going to keep throwing pitches out of the zone. There's no reason to throw a lot of pitches in the strike zone if you are making it easy for the pitcher. Now, number two, if you are patient up to bat, you are working the pitches count that's going to make his accuracy decrease over time. Number two, you have the information in your head. You have a certain spot where you are comfortable with inside pitches up pitches outside pitches or straight down the middle what i like is straight down the middle pitches and pitches that are a little bit high i will go after the low pitches only if i have two strikes and i am in protect mode that helps me so i can take more walks and see more pitches from the pitcher so here we go with a brand new better up zero zero one person on base what you should be thinking is it's the same pitcher and he's going to be trying to throw more pitches low to try to force you into a double play type situation. So any mistake where it's not low and it's a little higher right there, I reached out and got the pitch right there and we get a base hit. So a cutter to the outside, a little outside of the box, I'm able to reach out there, I'm able to pick up the timing of the pitches and it wasn't low in the zone to a double play. These are double play or forced ground ball type of play. All right, so now that you have them first two keys down, now you're going to be waiting for a pitch that you like. So there is a cutter right there high in the zone. Those are the perfect pitches that you want to go after. Now, a 0-2 pitch, you have to protect the plate that's inside. Remember, these pitches are super easy to pick up once you have it down by following his arm behind his head. That's an off speed right there. We waited on it. An off speed is going to jump a little bit, even if it's one inch out of his hand. Sinkers and the cutters are going to come at a straight angle, and then they're going to have movement once it get close to you. So if we look at this replay right here, we look at this replay. I got a runner on base. OK, so all I'm doing is waiting for a mistake pitch. A mistake pitch is I'm not chasing the pitches that he want me to chase. I'm looking for something in the zone that I can put my barrel on very, very easy and be able to get max power. 
So here he is winding up. Remember, I'm watching that arm right there. A mistake pitch is right there in that zone. We wait back on it. It's an off-speed pitch. Perfect barrel placement. Boom. Able to drive the ball for the home run. Now, what I mean by the pop is, if you get up here to the pitcher, you're going to see out of his hand, an off-speed is going to jump up a little bit higher out of his hand. Instead of it coming straight down at an angle, is going to pop up a little bit out of his hand. Whether it's a changeup, curveball, fork ball, those type of pitches are going to come from your back of your head and they're going to sit up for a quick second. Sit up, a fastball is going to come higher than the brim and come down. The rest of them are going to sit up above your head. That's the reason why I'm wearing this hat for this video. I'm trying not to make the video too long, but if you pay attention, watch the video over and over drop a thumbs up on the video. These tips will help you out tremendously. This video is super long. The last piece of information I wanna be able to give you is putting all them together. Every time a new pitcher come in, use that same sequence, okay? So Bruce Sutter, that I just hit a home run off of, is more of an off-speed pitches. You have two different pitchers. You have the rock pitchers. What I mean by that is, they will hit you with a lot of off-speed pitches to slow your bat down. They don't want you to be fast on the bat. Then you also have the alternative pitches where they will start off with a whole bunch of fastballs to see if you can catch up to the Randy Johnsons and all that. And then once they have you swinging super, super fast, that's when they will mix in the off-speed pitches outside the zone. So you can think it's a fastball low in the zone or a sinker low in the zone. And then you're gonna be swinging too fast and miss the pitches, okay? So so with that information, if you push right trigger or R2, he has a splitter, he has a fastball, he has a slider. His top pitch is what I call a up pitch, but usually a splitter is going to be thrown low in the zone. So that's information that I'm taking. Then he has a fastball that's going to come straight off of his brim at a straight angle. So his splitter might have a little bit of pop, but he'll try to aim it low in the zone. And then he's going to have a slider. Being that he's a right-handed pitcher, his pitch with the slider is going to come from the left side toward the better. All right, so with that information, now we're going to try to see how many good barrels we can put on the ball. Okay, so he's going to be throwing a lot of slow pitches to try to get your bet to be slowed down. And then he's going to be mixing in the fast pitches. And that's when we get a perfect, perfect right there. Okay, so you're going to be sitting with your mind thinking about the fast pitches. Little PCI movement. All I do with the PCI, I put both fingers over the top of this right here to give me more control with the controller. I put my thumb right here, barely over it, so it's a little bit of black still showing over the top. And the little movement that you need is this. A lot of people make mistakes by jamming, trying to reach spots that you don't need to worry about. All these right here, if you're making sound like that, the only reason why you need to do that is if you check swinging and you are stopping yourself from swinging. Everything else should be able to reach the zone just as easy as a little circular motion just like this. This little circular motion. Look how much black is left on the top of that. This little motion right here is enough to get you to all the areas. This will get you to the top. This will get you to the outside. Anything further than this is outside the zone that you don't really want to be swinging at. Okay? So... Now that we have that method down, I'm doing very small motions, just like this. I can reach up, I can reach outside, everything that I want. That's a little low outside. That's a 1-0 pitch right there, okay? I don't want to go way out the zone. I want to stay in the zone right here, locked in, barrel in with another perfect, perfect hit right there, okay? So, any things that fall in the small circular area is usually a strike. So, here he is, brings a new pitcher in. R2 real fast. He has a four seam and a cutter. Okay, so he has two downward pitches that I need to worry about. Boom. There's a cutter. A little bit of movement, but it's still more of a downward pitch. They want to put it in the middle or to the outside of the zone. Here we go with the next pitch. That's an up pitch. That's a slider. Okay, that one popped out of his hand and I waited on it. As soon as you see that pop, you have that one second to decide. You have enough time to move your PCI and make the decision. That was a pop out of his hand, 
a little bit over his head here a little bit of movement right here is going to touch every area that you want and there he is with another fastball 98 99 100 miles per hour it don't matter you have the information in your head the pitch types only thing you are doing is sitting back and waiting on the mistake two perfect swings right there sorry that the video is super long I will be streaming so you can ask me any type of questions and I will be able to answer you guys live in the stream. All right, so if y'all enjoyed that breakdown, drop a thumbs up on the video. I am open for any questions. I will answer them as much as possible. By the time this video go out, three hours after that, I should be live right here on YouTube. So turn your notifications on. This video should be going out by about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. I should be live around 6 no later than 7 p.m. I want to see every single one of you guys if these tips help you out. Let me know in the comment section what else you need help with. If you want to make a million stubs in less than four days, use the mini seasons method and I have a breakdown on that also. Let's go.